Well, good afternoon, Kristen Collins coming at you again with my amazing, beautiful friend, Janet Namaste. Good afternoon, Janet. Good afternoon, Kristen. How are you? I'm so happy to be connecting with you as I always am. So thank you so much time, so much for taking some time today to connect. Um, as I've been reflecting through this virus, uh, I've really been contemplating some of the people who have really changed the course of my life and really helped me get to the point that I am today with my view of well-being and health and how I self-care. And you, my friend, have been so impactful in my world and you're a newer friend to me. So I really appreciate the opportunity to just for the next half hour or so talk about some of the ways that you helped not only me, but how you help the people that you come in contact with. Oh, thank you so much for that. I'm honored to be here. I'm honored that you chose me as a, <laughs> as a mentor or as a medium of choice during that moment of your life. But, you know, what I say that there's no such thing as coincidences, you know, it was meant for us to meet certain people at certain periods of our life when we are just ready to take the next steps. And it could come at any kind of forms. It could come as a five foot one New Yorker, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or it could come as a six foot one, you know, um, whatever construction person, whatever it may be. It's the essence of the soul. We meet people and they act as catalysts in our life when, you know, when the time is right. So well, thank it you. was serendipitous the way that um, we met. And uh, I'd love to just recap how at the beginning of 2020, I found myself watching a YouTube video, which I didn't ever watch a YouTube video in my life. And it was with a colleague of yours and a, and a former mentor of mine, um, Jennifer Grace. And I'm watching her chat with you and I just was so drawn to you. And I found myself on my computer going on your website and signing up for an experience with you. And I just find that so comical in hindsight because that's not normally the way I would operate. But it was very divine how I just knew instinctually that you were someone that I was meant to work with. And the, I've done a lot of self-work and I've done a lot of healing and trauma healing and releasing, mm -hmm. or so I thought. And what I'd love for you to expand upon is the type of releasing um, that you're able to offer people you work with, or maybe just in this case, that you did with me because it was game changing for me. Okay, well, without, you know, saying anything personal, of course, because everything that, um, with every single client, it's 100% confidential, it's, it's, it's essential. But um, just a little background, I started this work, I mean, I've been doing intuitive healing, let's say, my entire life, but I do have a degree in computer science and education. So I come from a lineage of um, a lot of physicians and my father is an engineer who is obsessed, who was obsessed with quantum physics. So um, all of my family members are physicians. So um, I was always left brain, right brain. And as a little girl, I knew that I had this gift of seeing or feeling and um, I was an empath, like so many people are, especially now during the coronavirus. We are so, um, sensitivities are magnified. Everything is heightened. And sometimes we, there's so much fear that comes up and we don't know if it belongs to us or if it belongs to somebody else. Or there's this collective energy that is like snowballing into this like huge mass and um, so everyone right now, I think, is part of this awakening. But going back is um, the way that I've always worked with people. My my wait, my awakening happened through a certain crisis. What would other people think is a crisis? And it was when my first child was born, and I was 28 years old, and um, she. They said that she would never be able to see. You know, she was preemie and. She's, she sees, she's amazing, she's my miracle, granted. We had intervention, it was integrative medicine. You know, she had surgeries, like, you know, um, Western and Eastern, let's say, integrative stuff. And that was the time when I knew that I had to go into the doors of my destiny and to do what I came here, my path. And my path, I have a gift of bringing out 
the gifts in other people. And the way that I do it is um, I'm able to tune in to the person. It has to, it has to happen organically. Actually, the majority of my clients, it's interesting. There, I am a celeb I work with a lot of celebrities, but a lot of them are in the C-suite, the CFOs, the CEOs, the it's it's because in when it comes down to logic and when it comes down to intuition, the best business decisions actually happen when it's that gut feeling. But the way that I usually work with others is like through this process called the destiny session, I'm able to discern the essence of the person and we remove the fears that no longer suit you. And a lot of these fears are man-made and it has to do with social conditioning as well. Not just of, it could have been even ancestral of the things that we covert or overt could have been exposed to or what our parents have been exposed to. It could have gone even so further back because I am a hypnotherapist when you're inside of your own mother's womb and of her thought forms. So um, given my the fact that I am a hypnotherapist also, I'm able to go deep, really go deep and remove those um, past programs, negative programs, past negative relationships that no longer serve. And that's what we did with you, you know, but it was because you were open and you were ready and there has to be also a level of trust. And it's not trusting me, but it's trusting yourself and um, trusting me, the source. Of, uh, I'm, just, I'm just the person that is giving you that information. That's all it is. And you could tell when you look in someone's eyes, right? The eyes are the windows to the soul, whether you trust them, whether they're lying, whether they're, it's, it's that instant connection. So probably with the YouTube video, perhaps it was that soul recognition. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. It was, <laughs> it was surreal. And it was, it was like almost an out of body. Cause I'm like, I can't, I'm going on this woman's website and signing up for something. And I, I, I mean, it was, it was so amazing how drawn I was. And to your point, I was definitely ready, but I was really stuck. And you're talking about making business decisions on intuition. And I, as, as I reflect, um, I, I have been very intuitive. And, and I have heard myself say, even in business scenarios, when asked, why did, why did you go in that direction? Why did you make that decision? Sometimes I'm like, I, I, my gut, I just felt it. And so I loved living my life that way. And, and what was interesting for me it was around my 50th birthday, which is about three years ago. I just lost my, I lost my jam. <laughs> I lost yeah. my way. I was thrown off my game and big time. And I could not find my intuition. I did not trust my gut. Um, and I was really, really stuck. So you, uh, you know, it released within me and I'm starting to believe in myself and trust myself again. And, and there's really no greater gift than knowing and being comfortable with self and having just spent almost three years, very uncomfortable in my own skin. Um, I'm full of gratitude for that work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your open heart. Um, it's also where it's like, um, it's when you make a decision to live and not just exist. Mm then then magic happens because um it has to come from within because um who are we to judge somebody else's path you know and especially now what this coronavirus is doing it's there's a great wake-up call for humanity what's real what's not real what matters what doesn't matter it's like things we accumulate things we harbor judgments we harbor even it's not even judgments of ours of other people but then you start thinking how how is the how are people going to view us listen i was afraid on a personal level to come out of the woo woo closet i mean coming from a family of all science of all like business people my husband's in the business world i was like playing it safe you know and even though that i i have this gift and i'm like you know what coming from parents who are immigrants, you always have to have a backup plan and a backup plan, no matter what. Um, but there's this calling of living authentic. And that's what's happening right now, I think. And 
everyone is coming out of the facade, perhaps. Like this corona is kind of breaking down the walls of the facade and people are coming out of the woodworks to help. And you know, who cares what they think of me? Who cares about competing with the Joneses? Who cares about all of that? What's most important is the quality, the character of who you are and living in alignment with your truth. And for the first time ever, like I'm 40 something. <laughs> First time ever, it's like it's it's like I actually am walking my walk, talking my talk, and not fearing who's gonna think what. Because when we're playing small and we're not in alignment, it's like this fog of uh, this fog happens. But when you're ready to live in an authentic path, and that's when people will actually contact me, it's not about like I don't want to live a lie, because that's like saying that everything in the past was wasn't your truth. No. It was just existence and we just get used to just going on autopilot because it's it's okay. You know, it's it's strolling away. You're 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 putting the car on um, you know, when we put the car on not on automatic, but when we just put it on automatic when they're automatically driving. What is that called? <laughs> Self self driving? Well, yeah, it's self-driving, but it's also like when it goes a certain speed. I forgot the word. Oh, no, cruise control. <laughs> yes, we're like on cruise control on a speed that we're just used to. And, and it's just thinking that the next day is going to be something different. It's Groundhog's Day. And even though it's you go to a different party, you go to a different function, you get another job. But then if you still have the same mindset and nobody cracks open up that shell and you see your inner brilliance, You'll never be able to step into that power. And then other people will in, in be inspired to do the same, not because in competition, but because of just wanting to be happy. That's all it is. It's just about happy. You have a choice. We think we don't choose. We think, ah, this is just my life. No, we choose happiness or sadness. You know, it's grief or forgiveness. And right now we're going through the cycles of all of that because of COVID, what a wake up call. This is actually a big gift for humanity as well because we all signed up for this and we will all rise above it better than ever in the quote unquote new norm, absolutely. But my, hearts go out, my heart goes out to everybody that has been suffering in the hospitals and, and the families as well. I lost you know, a family member also to this. So it's, um, my heart goes out to all the families. Well, thank you for that. And you are just, you're doing such amazing work before and now through. Um, and you're talking about elevating a vibration and raising an energy level. And if we could dive a little bit deeper into that, because I was really fortunate in the month of April uh, to enjoy you offered up, you had a Friday offering um, at 11 o'clock and I took my lunch break and, and meditated with you. And while I've meditated, I, I prefer a guided meditation versus just doing it myself. And I've enjoyed a lot of very, very fabulous practitioners, but you, I don't know, you just work for me, something about you. And we finish, and I'm like, ah, I feel like I could climb a mountain or I don't know, run an ultra or something. So I think what you've helped me accomplish, and I know I'm on a journey, but I feel like my energy has been revived and my, my level of vibration has elevated especially during a global pandemic, do you have any thoughts on how folks can elevate their energy or their vibration while dealing with real life trauma? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, thank you for that at 11 o'clock on Fridays. That was, that it's was nice. fabulous. Such a great way to roll into the weekend. <laughs> Oh, thank you. And everybody actually could access it. They could go on my YouTube slash Namaste with Love. Oh, I, I uploaded all of those meditations. You yes. did? Oh, can I now, do them a second time? Is, would that be effective? You can do them a hundred times. Each time you're going to do the meditation, it's going to take you somewhere different because the meditation is about clearing and healing. And you're not the same person as you were a week ago, which... <laughs> which segues to your question in terms of the, um, about energy and about vibrations and what that all is. So we are all energy. I'm energy, the, the table's energy, your energy. And inside of us, we're made up of um, body, which is our physical vehicle. We made up of soul. That's the essence 
of who I truly am. That's the essence of who you truly are. That's the essence of who my little puppy is. It's their soul. It's the, it's that inner light that is inside us. That's who we actually are. It's all of our talents, all of our gifts, all of our weaknesses, you know, and then there's the energy of spirit, which is of source. And this is when we are born. And we, when we are born, we get breath. We, we take our first breath. And as soon as we take our first breath, and that, that it's like almost the energy of like God or source goes within us. Because when we take our last breath, that's when our body is just our body, but our soul and our spirit goes somewhere else but that's another that's another topic we're gonna just go to the energy so when we're born we're born with this this um, um our vessel is full completely like our the water bottle is completely full with this amount of energy but when we're not aligned with our truth what happens it slowly kind of leaks out and we're depleted and then we then we run on like half empty and me if i'm driving my car i don't like my car my my tank half uh, empty. I like it. I like it three quarters full, put it that way. That's just <laughs> same as my energy. In the morning, I practice Kundalini to raise that energy up because we have, when we are constantly doing for others and we're not doing for ourselves, we're depleting our energy as well. And it's not about us not being compassionate or supportive. It's that we can't pour from an empty cup. It's, you know, it's important to put the mask on yourself first and then on others, right? So with this energy level that we have when we're first born, um, all of our organs have a certain megahertz associated with it when they're healthy. So if you take a healthy person and you put them in a room with someone who is not healthy, even if they cough or sneeze, their immunity is very high because their frequency level, which is there's, there's this, um, I think it's called a sesometer. It actually can, can um, it's a, you know, some physics tool, like a kind of like a barometer of some sort that can measure the energy field of like your body. It's like a Ghostbusters kind of thing, I bet, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a quantum physics tool, sesometer, I believe that's what it's called. So each of our organs have a certain energy field associated with it, but our main life force, our main energy, when we are feeling depleted and whatever it is, it's we're susceptible for certain viruses we're susceptible for certain even allergies we're susceptible not realizing that we're not giving ourselves it's like the good juju meaning like removing all of the negativity that no longer serves us our fears our apprehensions the lies that people told us false beliefs we have to get that out in order to make space of good energy. It's actually very simple. It's like decluttering. It's springtime, spring cleaning. But we need to do this spring cleaning every day. Otherwise, it's going to be like, like um, first it'll be like a drop of honey. And then later on that it becomes like molasses. Then it becomes very, very thick. It hardens. And it's harder to break through that in order to have healthy energy flow. So it's better to clean it up. Does life get easier when you understand about when you feel high vibrations, which means it's happiness, it's love, it's appreciation, all of those kind of things. But do bad things happen? Yeah, it does. But it's the way that we react to it that is most important because it's only temporary. It's only temporary, like temporarily. That's that feeling. It's the law of impermanence. This too shall pass. So the more we cleanse that out and make space for something brand new where we learn how to trust, that's how our energy levels rise up. And that's when we start taking better care of ourselves. We start eating more nutritious. We're cognitive, we're, co we, we're cognizant of, of our thought forms of, oh wait, that's, that's negative Nancy talking, that's not me. <laughs> we're, 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 we are more aware of even the people that we surround ourselves with. We're not gonna be surrounding with ourselves with complainers or anything like that, or energy like pullers, you know? Um, so it's, we take care of our body, of our mind, our spirit, and that's what raises our vibes. It's not self-preservation, it's self-love. That's what it is. That's what energy is. And you feel it. And there are times where we, if sometimes we're having a lazy day, it's okay. Or we want to be in grief, it's okay. 
but write it out. Otherwise, those, that energy still lives inside of you. Write it out. Get it out. It doesn't mean it's going to happen because right, it, it's just, a, it's like a, just allow it like to get out. Otherwise the, you know, the universe doesn't like a vacuum when we're constantly going, 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 going. We're just, we're just depleting our battery. You know, we're not taking our car to get serviced, our vehicle and, and, and spirit to get serviced. So, so yeah. that's, it so hits home for me. Um, yeah. Because again, it was about three years ago, I had no idea I was depleted. I was, I don't know what I was running on, adrenaline, I, whatever it was. And it was actually on a retreat that I went on and I, there was an Ayurvedic doctor there and she looked at me and she said, I have no idea how you are here right now. And I'm like, what do you mean? I took an airplane, I'm good. And she said, you literally are completely depleted. You are 100%, all you've done is give and you won't allow A, receiving from others and B, receiving of self. Um, and that has been the journey and we talk about judgment or negativity and while it, my judgment and negativity wasn't so much going out to others, it was a very deep judgment and negativity towards self that right. I wasn't even cognitively aware of. Um, and it was this like major excavation to identify that and then really heal that. And so I hear myself um, connect with people and talk about judgment and, and don't judge. Uh, but for me, the true core and message is you have to start with self before you can release and then go ahead and freely love others. You have to love and trust yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it takes, it takes a lot of courage to actually admit that. And the only way that you can do what you do to elevate people's hearts, to open up people's hearts and to, it's when you've actually experienced it. How can you speak about happiness? How can you speak about elevating, um, you know, the truth that were, you know, spreading good vibes and everything like that and trying to, you know, tell people, hey, this is, this could be a key to your success. If you help one person out of a thousand, that one person, you just ignited something in them that they could see their inner brilliance, which is beautiful. But the only way that we can speak about this is not just like of reading a book and um, it's about actually being through it. The only way I can speak about happiness is like, I've been through certain issues. You know, when I had my child, I had postpartum depression. I've experienced it. You know, how do I know about living? It's because I've experienced like burying people that I love. You know, how do I experience? It's, it's all about, we learn through contrast as well. And sometimes when we're so used to just existing in a certain way, we're, and we're running on fumes, it just, you know, there, there are signals that the universe will send us. And this is in my destiny session that I'm able to really tune in to people of what their specific three signals are. And the first signal for all, it has to do, if it doesn't feel right, it isn't right, period. The second one is so individual depending on the essence of the soul of the person. That's something that I, I delve into when I'm meditating. And the third signal is like, it's each specific souls of life the way you know it's your brand new life. It's a wake up call. You know, it's the universe will never punish you. It's we punish ourselves when we, by our self sabotage of not aligning ourselves, of we think that we don't have a choice and we're just in it. This is just the way my life is. And we look for outside sources to make us happy a new car, a new boat, a new this. That's only temporary. It's great. Absolutely. By, there's nothing wrong of being spiritual, having abundance. There's nothing wrong being healthy. But if you're not living and you're just existing and you're in a fog, it doesn't have substance to it. It's just being like, like robots, like we're numb, you know, like that's what it is. Yeah. And I think we were, you know, you, you referenced this before. I think we were on this very numb pathway of how are we getting filled through the per, you know consumerism, through judgment, through lavish, um, and that constant seeking. And to your point, it's great to have wonderful things. I hope I'm blessed to be able to enjoy all of yes. this world's stuff. Um, 
in this lifetime, but, but at the same time, that's not what the happiness is. And I loved something else you said before, and this has been a really big aha for me because I would ride the waves of joy and purchases and, and the good. And then when something bad was happening in life, I was very victimized and it was somebody else's fault. And, you know, I, I was constantly tr searching to protect myself from what I deemed negative and then only mm -hmm. trying to spend time in the positive. And, and I, you said this earlier, and this has been a really big aha for me, life's going to ebb and flow. And there's going to be days that are really not good, you know, w things you would prefer not. And there's going to be days that are, you know, elating. Um, but really both days are perfect. And life's only guarantee is that you're going to constantly receive change and to be in that moment. And your choice is how you react or experience what life is unfolding because you are not that experience you are the entity you're being experiencing correct. it correct you're inside the vehicle that is experiencing it exactly and our mind is such a powerful thing you know Woo, our mind could be tricky it can it could be our best but we have to make friends with our minds you know and how um, do we do that how do we make friends with our mind how do we manage our mind? Oh, goodness. So this is, you know, we should do another another um, talk about that, of sure. that mindset. Um, but one one way is what I mentioned about earlier, like with every positive thought, is like there's this flow, like the way that your destiny looks like when you're born, you have, there's you sign a contract kind of, and you see, you see the, the positives. And I don't want to say the negatives. How about the challenges? Sure. Because there's nothing, there's nothing negative. Everything is actually neutral. Everything's it's, it's our perception of what it is, of what is happiness and what is like that feeling of lack. When we feel that we're not fulfilled or we're in, our security has been breached, then we, we say, Oh, that's negative. But in reality, that actually is a big gift to us. And we don't, at that moment, if you're not awakened, you're going to think, and it's a victimized. I was there, you know, I, I was, I was there, especially like, you know, when I was just trying as a young mom, trying to like, you know, my kids were three years apart and, you know, we didn't, I didn't have extra help and I was doing everything from morning to night. My husband was traveling because of business. He was always, and I'm like, I'm like, this is, nuts like I was I was like a zombie I was I was a, there was periods of time like that but we have what our destiny looks like is that there's doors to the right that we came here and no matter what we're gonna go through them these are opportunities to elevate to go into the doors of our potential but it's not always like where somebody is like going to do it for us we we, we need to we need to learn we need to learn and until we master it otherwise it's going to be redundant and we're like here I go again. I'm going on this wheel again. Oh, didn't this happen last year, but with a different person? It's like the <laughs> same. It's like it's Groundhog's Day, but it's like the same lesson. It could be in a different company or it could be a different, a different like deal altogether, different agreement, but a different mask. That's all it is. But it's the same lesson. Why? Because we're not letting go of our protection. Our fears come out like they're like bodyguards. Okay, like they're like bodyguards. I got your back. Don't worry about it. I got your back. So you have to, you have to actually, your mind needs to speak to them and say, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for trying to protect me. But I think I got this, you know, thank you. Because if you say, I wash my fears away, I'm not going to deal with my fears. I'm just going to be positive. The fake it till you make it doesn't work because energy never lies and if inside of you you're fearful but you smile that energy of fear is going to attract certain issues of other fear that's the law of attraction that's the way that it that's the way it's a magnetic pole it's this like law of contrast as well you know so the way to actually is to filter it out the way that you could clear out is to filter it to write it down but to acknowledge it acknowledge it like i know it sounds crazy like it's like almost like third person talk but you have to speak to them them like the fears as if you were speaking to somebody that's really trying to protect you but you're okay like when you are a teenager and you're like 
mom, why can't I stay out? Dad, why can't I stay out until two o'clock in the morning? And they're like, well, you're not allowed. And it's like, all right, can I, it's, it's getting that extra permission because you feel confident enough. So, so it's important to speak to them very nicely. And then you're going to create space for miracles to happen. That's the whole thing. And what is miracle? Miracle is just a shift in your perception. That's all it is. So those, you know, self-sabotaging thoughts have been there eons like from our ancestors that get passed down, especially survival, because it's in our DNA. But it's a responsibility for us now to wash it away, to speak to them like we would, like those bodyguards. Like, I got this now. I'm strong. I was, I was, you know, I, I've been preparing my whole entire life. I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to do it. So that's really what it is. It's like a play on role play in a way, but that's the way it has to, it has to come from a place of compassion and sincerity, not a place of like, I don't know if this is really working. You know what I mean? It has to come from a place of sincerity. Right. And now the time is here where we have that, I'd say forced pause, right? Where there's so much disruption and there's so much fear and there's so many unknowns that there's no time like the present to be able to address those fears that are unearthing right now because we don't have the distractions. It's, it's really interesting and, and can be viewed as, as beautiful. You know, how are you taking the time? What lessons are you examining? And then what confidence are you moving forward with? And uh, that's exactly why I wanted to take a pause right now and just touch back in with people who have altered my confidence and my um, being in touch with my own self and my belief in myself. And um, I'm just so grateful for your work and your friendship and um, the lives that you are changing uh, through your grace and, and your divinity. I'm just honored, Janet, to know you and walk this with you. Thank you. I'm honored as well. Thank you so much, Kristen, for your beautiful heart. Thank you for sharing this knowledge with the world. And thank you for doing what you do because um, the world needs you. You know, <laughs> the world's a much better place with your truth inside and out, with your beauty shining through those beautiful eyes of yours. And, and truly, thank you so much for all your charity work, your humanitarian work, and for just being real, you know, for being real. Because um, it's, it's, you know, when people say, well, this is just who I am. No, I am because of all of the ebbs and flows, because of the ups and downs, because of all of you know the experiences and because of that i'm a better person for it now that i i think maya angelou right she says now that i know better or now that you know better you do better mm -hmm. that's it but people get stuck in the in the guilt and the shame and now is the time where with covid where we're it's an introspective moment where we really embrace like our true authentic gift so thank you so much for you embracing your gift and allowing me to be part of your journey. Thank you very much. Thanks for helping me get unstuck. <laughs> um, so folks can um, go ahead and check out those meditations that we were talking about on your YouTube page. And then if folks wanted to reach out to you, what would be the best way to get in touch with Janet? So they can email info at namastaywithlove.com. And they could just say that they are from you, from Kristen Collins. And also, um, I will. there's also a special meditation that I could send out to them as well, that, um, which is on namastewithlove.com slash destiny session gift. Wonderful. Okay, so slash destiny session gift. And they could download a special meditation that will allow them to kind of remove those fears, exactly what we were talking about here, and for them to get back on their destiny and step up to the plate of what they came here to do. Well, if that's the one that I did when I first came across you on YouTube and I downloaded that meditation and did it, I invite everybody to do the same thing. Thank you. Janet, thank you so much. Love thank you. you. Be I safe love up you. in New York. Thanks for connecting. Thank you.
Bye. Bye.